Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on hypothesis testing. In this video we will look at the classical method versus the p-value method approaches. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this set of videos. This presentation has assumed that students already know how to do hypothesis testing on the mean, that x is normally distributed, and that sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown, and they know how to do hypothesis testing on the mean using both the classical approach and the p-value approach. Our goals are to compare the classical approach and the p-value approach and to review the reasoning behind the decision process using the p-value and to provide some exercises for students to practice. Let's look at example number one. A manufacturer produces rope. The breaking strength of the rope is normally distributed and a random sample of 10 ropes is taken and their breaking strength in pounds is measured. We have 284, 300, 304, 293, 300, 311, 274, 305, 282 and 330 as the breaking strengths. Using a point using a 0 0.05 level of significance tests the claim that the mean breaking strength is less than 300 pounds and we will use both the classical approach and the p-value approach. Using one VAR stats on the TI-84 calculator, you will type in your data and find that the sample mean is 298.3, X bar is equal to 298.3, the sample standard deviation S is 16.1180, and that N is equal to 10. Our alpha, the significance level, is 0.05 and we're testing the claim that the mean is less than 300 pounds. For our first part, we will use the classical approach. For Mrs. Borlaug, she has her five boxes for her five-step approach, which is a wonderful structure and helps you to remember to complete all five steps. We have the hypothesis, the critical value, the test statistic, the conclusion, and our sentence in terms of H1. We have H sub 0 and H sub 1 are hypotheses. So the first thing we need to do is to go back and look at test the claim. Test the claim that the mean is less than 300. Since that does not contain the condition of equality, that becomes our alternate hypothesis H1, the mean mu less than 300 pounds. The null hypothesis then becomes mu greater than or equal to the opposite of less than 300 pounds. We're now ready to find our critical value by drawing our normal curve. Our degrees of freedom are 10 minus 1 or 9 and looking the critical value for degrees of freedom of 9 and a significance level of point zero or zero point zero five and a left tail test gives us a critical value of negative one point eight three three that gives us the reject and do not reject the null regions we are now ready to compute the test statistic t equals x bar minus mu, mu sub zero divided by s divided by the square root of n. 
which gives us 298.3, our sample mean, minus 300, what we're comparing our population standard our population mean to divided by 16.1180 divided by the square root of 10. When calculated, that gives us negative 0.334. And if we graph that onto our normal curve, we see that that falls where that falls, and that falls in the do not reject region. So that means our conclusion is do not reject the null, do not reject h sub 0. So we are ready to write our sentence. The first part is always using a then fill in the blank level of significance. So for our case that's using a 0 0.05 level of significance. Since we have a not here, there is not evidence to say, and what are we claiming? That the mean breaking strength is less than 300 pounds. Now we will do the same problem using the p-value approach. We still have the same general information that the sample mean x bar is 298.3, the sample standard deviation is 16.1180, and that n equals 10. You actually still should have your information in list 1. Our hypotheses are the same, that the mu is less than 300 pounds as your alternate, and that the null is that the mu is greater than or equal to 300 pounds. You should put your information in list 1. It should be there from where you found your x bar to start out with, doing one var statistics. But this time you should go to t-test. Remember that your input is your data. Your mu sub 0 is the 300 pounds that we're comparing it to. Your information is in list 1 with a frequency of 1. The mu we're comparing it to, or the claim, is the alternate hypothesis, which is H1, which is less than. Then you should calculate, and Ms. Borlaug has also done the draw here, and that gives us a p-value. Our alpha is the 0 0.05, and our p-value is 0 0.3732. Our p-value is greater than our alpha. Remember, if the p is low, the null must go. If the p is high, we let it fly. A low or less, if the p is low or less than the alpha, that is unusual and we reject the null. If the p is high or greater than the alpha, it is not unusual. And our p is high, so it is not unusual. Therefore, we do not reject HO or the null. And our sentence is the same as we got with the classical approach. Using a 0 0.05 level of significance, there is not evidence to say that the mean breaking strength is less than 300 pounds. Now let's compare the classical approach to the p-value approach. Here are the results for both on our screen. Notice that the t-values are the same. In the classical approach, we got 0, negative 0 0.334. On our calculator, if we rounded that to three decimal places, that would give us negative 0.334. The area to that left is there's the t value in that second graph and the p value is the probability of being less than that. 
Since the critical region is in the left tail, the p-value is the area to the left of the t-value. The alpha is 0 0.05. The data's t-value has a left tail larger than the alpha. So the T value falls in the do not reject HO region. Our P is, point, is 0 0.3732. Our alpha is 0 0.05. Our T value is negative 0 0.334. Conclusion, do not reject H sub 0 or null. If the P is low, the null must go. If the P is high, let it fly. Circle the correct answer. The data's T value falls in the do not reject HO region if P is less than alpha or P is greater than alpha. If P is greater than alpha. If P is low, the null must go. If P is high, we let it fly. We do not reject. We do not make conclusions. We let it fly. Now, it is time for a second example, but we've run out of time on my clock. So I will stop the first video here, and we will pick up here in the second part of this series. Thank you for watching.